Fear, blame, conspiracy. Next on Global Pulse. How these international broadcasters are covering the ripple effect of the swine flu outbreak. Despite repeated assurances from health officials that the new flu strain was mainly spread by human contact, fear of pork gripped the world, as Russia Today and China's CCTV report. The Agriculture Ministry have imposed a ban on pork imports from Mexico and the three infected U.S. states. And there's been a complete ban on any raw meat being brought by travelers and their hand luggage from America. Even countries untouched by the flu took strong precautions. SABC questioned Egypt's move to slaughter pigs. And Egypt has ordered the mass culling of hundreds of thousands of pigs. This as precaution as swine flu nears the borders of the North African country. Experts say the culling of pigs in Egypt is unlikely to affect the spread of swine flu, but could help quell public panic. NHK English showed how farmers in Thailand protected their swine from humans. Thai companies operating large pig farms put measures into place on Monday. They are stepping up programs to monitor hygiene and say that any workers with flu-like symptoms will not be allowed to work in the farms. As nations ostracized Mexico, the epicenter of the outbreak, CNN found people rejecting the idea that their country was to blame. Not one person here believes that the virus originated in Mexico. Somebody got it in Canada and then gave it to somebody in the United States who brought it here. It's a fever from Asia that came here to this country. You know, all the drug problem is Mexico's fault. Everything is always Mexico. There's one jalapeno which gets some old lady sick in Indiana. It's definitely Mexican. So, I mean, Mexico is the thing the U.S. always kicks around. Even Mexico found someone to blame, a U.S. pork processor, as France 24, CNN, and ABC reported. This is ground zero in the swine flu outbreak, La Gloria. A month ago, La Gloria had its own flu epidemic. More than 800 people in the town of 2000 got sick. When people here heard that a case of swine flu had been traced to this area, few were surprised. And in the next breath, they'll tell you they think they know where it came from. The industrial pig farm is huge and owned by American company Smithfield Foods. But the Mexican Department of Agriculture and the company itself said they've done testing and the tests have come back negative. For the past two years, villagers have complained about sanitary conditions on the farm. They say the smell of rotting carcasses and manure is overwhelming. It's all part of the largest pig farming company in the world, with nearly a million pigs raised here each year. Galavision showed how some people search for ways to protect their health, while others looked for ways to line their wallets. Las farmacias del Distrito Federal. Sales of vitamin C and antiviral medications are up 300 to 500 percent. Some pharmacies are limiting the sale of face masks, but some people are buying large quantities and reselling them on the street at a big markup. Flu fear sparked a run on face masks in Japan. FCI's reporters went to extremes to tell the story. The sale of medical masks and goggles has dramatically increased. This company is flooded with orders for medical supplies from people not only in medical offices, but also ordinary people. The sudden appearance of the flu virus sparked a lot of questions. ITN and Russia Today found no trouble presenting extreme theories. The scientists are very alarmed by the way it's being spread and the, and the speed at which it's being spread. And it's their conclusion that uh, this is a very unusual form of flu because it looks like it is a product of some gene splicing. To them, it doesn't look like this is naturally occurring. If there's one thing you can count on to spread faster than a deadly virus, it's conspiracy theories about that virus. Infowars.com dubiously inform us that top globalists, including former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld, have financial interests in Tamiflu, the drug being stockpiled by governments across the world, and leave you to draw your own conclusions from that. For Global Pulse. Northeast China has reported an outbreak of the African swine fever after slaughtering over 900 pigs in a scramble to contain the disease. 
African swine fever doesn't affect humans, but pigs, for pigs is highly contagious, fatal, and has no cure. News of the outbreak has put Taiwan's agriculture authorities on high alert. Led by a beagle, this quarantine officer weaves through baggage claim at Taoyuan International Airport as the dog searches for the faintest trace of meat. Everyone knows about what happened in mainland China on August 3rd. We received notification that they had a swine fever epidemic. The virus of African swine fever can survive in chilled pork for up to 100 days and in frozen pork for 1,000 days. It was first detected in Kenya at the turn of the 20th century, and it results in death in pigs 100 percent of the time, as there is no known treatment. The disease spread from Africa and has been detected in Europe, South America, Russia, and now northeast China, giving Taiwanese authorities cause for concern. Uh, we ask all our people, if you go to China, no matter which province you go to, we advise you not to enter livestock facilities. And if you go to the northeastern provinces, if you go to a related facility, you will be subject to quarantine and disinfection upon your return home. The Council of Agriculture said that African swine fever is currently not known to affect humans, although it can be transmitted from humans to pigs. Given the heavy flow of people between China and Taiwan, quarantine officers are treating the Chinese epidemic as a matter of concern, raising border checks to their highest level to prevent the disease from entering. Facebook and Twitter friends if they were concerned about swine flu. Most of them said no. Let's see what Venice Beach has to say. Are you at all concerned about swine flu? No. No, not at all? Not worried about it. All right. Are you at all concerned about the H1N1 virus swine flu? Yeah, yeah. how we don't have enough vaccines. Right. Of course, yeah, I just heard it on the radio today. I guess it's a pretty big deal. Are you guys at all concerned about swine flu? No. No, not at all. No, I live in Minnesota. We haven't had much of an epidemic on swine flu at all, really. No, not concerned. <laughs> Are you at all concerned about the H1N1 virus swine flu? Sure, I am a little bit. I heard something on the news, uh, well, they're going to start giving out vaccinations. I'm afraid of getting it from my students. From schools. Last year, anyway, it may be yeah. worse this year. We don't know. I know two guys who had swine flu, and they uh, were out of work for about two weeks, and so it just came and passed. Actually, they shut down half our school because of it, yeah. There's a bunch of people. But everyone seemed to make it out okay. Yeah, it's pretty easy to cure unless you're really dumb. I haven't heard any deaths around where we, where we live, so. Okay. And where are you from? Brookfield, Connecticut. Connecticut. Are you concerned at all about swine flu, the H1N1 virus? No. Don't drink with other people you do not know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Haven't had any cases that I'm aware of around me. Yeah, I'm exposed to it a lot, but it's, I think it's a little bit overhyped up, and uh, I'm pretty uh, resistant to everything. I don't believe it's all hype, but I'm not concerned about getting it. I mean, I would be if I was exposed to it. You don't really take public transportation? Or... No. I try to avoid the public. <laughs> flu is normal. It's possible that um, even by a normal flu, uh, people can die. It's only from the um, TV and the radio pushed. It's just something to keep your mind off what really is important in life. The fear itself is what creates most of the diseases that are out today. I think people should just live their lives and enjoy. I just keep my hands clean. <laughs> Little Purell. <laughs> what about you? Not really. I don't really get sick. Are you at all concerned about swine flu, the H1N1 virus? Not really. <laughs> no? No, no. Where are you from? China. And you heard before you left about it? Yes, yes. They're kind of quite serious in America. Are you at all concerned about H1N1 swine flu? No. No? Think it's all hype? I, I think I had it, and it was only last like three days, and it was no big deal. Oh, you you think you had it? Did you get tested? I did. Oh wow. I did have it, and it was no big deal. Wow. Uh, I have a sister who's a nurse in Milwaukee, and they had some swine flu outbreaks, and she says the common flu is kills way more people than the swine flu ever does. Are you at all concerned with swine flu, the H1N1 virus? Yes. <laughs> What about you? No. No? <laughs> yes. I don't know anyone directly that's been affected by it. Just a lot of rumors, so not that concerned. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. 
Yeah. So just let it, let it, let it be. If it happens, it's gonna happen. Yeah. Anything, just like death. You can't predict it. If it's gonna time, when your number's up, your number's up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's happening. Right? Are you worried about swine flu? No. Oh, it just doesn't seem like it's so much worse than the regular flu, I guess. Although I did hear that Landon Donovan, the LA Galaxy soccer player, got it. So uh, I guess that made it seem a little more real.